have some liquid cooling parts that I want to use, but um, they've kind of been sitting in my drawer for a while and they definitely need to be cleaned. So I'm going to disassemble them as much as I can, get the little O-rings out, and then I'm going to boil some vinegar and some water and clean them up. Okay, as my room gets messier, I get closer and closer to being done. I took off the motherboard from the test bench. Took off the motherboard. <laughs> Anyways, it's here on my anti-stack mat right now, and I'm gonna put the water block on. And the reason I do it this way is I like to do it in two stages. Firstly, when putting on an aftermarket heat sink, I like to get all the screws, everything lined up, it all on the board installed, but not super tight. Because I find that most aftermarket heat sinks will warp the board if you just install it with the board out of the case. So once I got everything lined up, then I'm gonna install it in the case and then I'll tighten everything down. That way the board will stay nice and straight and we don't have to worry about any damage to the motherboard whatsoever. I have my water block, which I got cleaned up very nicely and put back together. Here's my anti-static clip. I don't use paper towels because they leave little bits of fiber in the socket. I like the microfiber because it will completely clean everything up. So I got lucky and I found a back plate for some other water block. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take off the studs, which fit perfectly, and I'm going to trace out this inner silicone jacket. I'm just going to be extra lazy and do it this way. So I used to spread my thermal paste out across the face of the CPU, but I found that using a pea-sized amount was better because you can troubleshoot if your block made good contact or not. My back plate was all assembled, so I installed it on the back of the board as carefully as I could and installed the CPU block on top of it. Now, this next part, I put the springs and the socket cap screws on the top and I lightly screwed them all down because after I got done putting them on I wanted to tighten them very slowly and very evenly at the same time um, again not so much that I was going to warp the board just enough to have a good contact because later I'll put it back on the bench and then tighten it down right now I'm checking to see if the board was flexing at all and it wasn't the board, um, it looks gorgeous. I really like this board. I probably will get one for myself, and the block looks nice on top of it, too. It's going to light up red with that little LED for the hard drive light, and I think it's going to look pretty cool. So with the CPU installed, it was time to put the motherboard inside the chassis. I carefully lowered it inside the depths of the chassis bowels. I didn't want to scratch the matte black paint, so I was extra careful. I had to do some clever maneuvering, but you know, it actually went in pretty nice. I didn't want to use normal screws, so I actually found these really cool black thumb screws, and I think that it makes the install look a little bit more unique. It certainly does look kind of cool. I'm, I'm actually happy with how it's turning out so far. Well, it's getting late and I want to go to bed, but there's one more thing I have to do. I gotta get the radiator and the fans installed in my bracket, and then I'll call the night. I had purchased some stainless screws that already fit the radiator, but after putting them in the radiator, I, I hated how they clash with the black. So I decided that instead, try this kids at home, that I was gonna mod out myself some black oxide screws that I already have. These are socket head caps and they look awesome. I'm really glad that I put forth this effort, even if it means that I didn't get to go to bed for another couple hours. Mary Poppins when you need her. So for the build, I'm putting the pump on the outside of the system. The guy I'm building this for, he loves using his computer, but the hardware is, I mean, he doesn't really know much about it. So I need to keep this as absolutely as simple as possible. And by putting the pump on the outside, he's going to be able to drain it and he's going to be able to fill it really simply. So to leak test the pump, I'm going to be using distilled water. It's very important to use distilled water. I'm also going to use it to clean out the loop when I start running it later. 
Now I actually didn't get this part in video, but what I do is I boil some hot water and after it stops boiling I put my tubing in it to set for a while. Then it becomes soft enough to not only bend into the places I need to get it bent, but you can also form it for some really tight angles. This tubing I'm using is from Home Depot and it just costs 15 cents a foot. I've used it for years and it works pretty good. Here's the distilled water again. I'm going to run it through the radiator and the water block several times to get all the junk out of it. It's so loud right now because the pump's not bled. There's a lot of air in it, and when there's a lot of air in it, it makes a lot of noise. But once it's fully bled, it'll be dead silent. Really, I just have to drain and fill and drain and fill until all the little air bubbles are gone. It's going to take quite a few iterations.